Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Mo, and today we're going to be talking about... Oh wait, I think there's something on the camera. Sorry guys, I just need to wipe that off. Ah, isn't that all better? What is up guys? This is Mo, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having an awesome day. I know I am, because today the product we're going to be reviewing is the Logitech G Pro Super Light Mouse. I just wanted to say I'm super grateful for the response on my last video. Thank you to everybody who watched and subscribed to the channel. Um, and the best is yet to come. So let's just get right into it. All right, so this is the Pro Superlight Wireless Gaming Mouse by Logitech G. I've had the Superlight for a little over a week now. And I have to say, I really, really like this thing. In fact, I like it so much, I don't want to use any other mouse I have here. On first look, you might say, well, what's changed? And you're right, nothing has been added, but a lot has been removed. The Pro Superlight is the Pro Wireless on a diet. The Superlight sheds a handful of features we are used to seeing on gaming mice to create an insanely light performance mouse without compromising on build quality. The Superlight is also certified carbon neutral. Now this is super cool to see Logitech put this much focus into the environment and having zero net carbon emission. I'd love to see more of this in the gaming industry. First off, let's go over what you get in the box. All right, cool. So let's start with the micro USB cable. This cable is unchanged from the previous generation Pro mouse. This isn't the best cable ever and I'll go more into this later in this review. The connector is stabilized by these two prongs in case you want to use it in wired mode. All right, next up. These here are the rubber grips you can choose to install on the mouse. It would make the mouse slightly thicker, but you can experiment to see whether these are helpful to you. They're actually pretty good quality and a nice value addition to throw in. Also included is a microfiber cloth you can use to clean the mouse before applying the rubber grips or just to wipe down the mouse from time to time, which I definitely recommend doing as this mouse does tend to catch oils and fingerprints. This here is the 2.4 GHz Lightspeed USB dongle with an extension hub. The USB dongle can be plugged directly into your device without the extension hub. But if you want the dongle to be as close as possible to your mouse, then the hub can be used in combination with the included micro B cable. This puck here is a replacement cover for the bottom of the mouse. But we can set this aside for now and I'll come back to it in a bit. Now, we all have been waiting for the mouse. And wow, this mouse is so light. Even coming from an already super light 74 grams Viper Ultimate, this is noticeably lighter. Logitech says the super light is under 63 grams, and many have seen this to be around 59 grams. The weight reduction has not impacted the build quality at all. The shell is solid, there is zero flex anywhere here, and no flex noises either. So how did we get under 63 grams, you ask? The super light shuts the DPI button under the mouse and also removes the DPI light indicator. Instead, there is a single LED light to indicate battery life. With these changes, DPI controls can only be done within the G-Hub software. Here within the software, you can also see the battery life and tweak a bunch of other features such as button layouts. The two side buttons on the right side of the mouse that were previously seen on the G-Pro have also been removed which makes this mouse no longer ambidextrous and now is more focused on right-hand users. Also gone is all RGB lighting on this mouse. Instead, we can see here a silver matte G logo. Now the removal of the RGB may have affected aesthetics if you're into RGB lights, but I think the gains on the battery life and the weight reduction is worth it. Now Logitech claims a 70 hour battery on this mouse, but honestly, since I've gotten it, I haven't had to try it once. So I think the battery life on this mouse is absolutely amazing. The Superlight features Logitech's 25K Hero sensor, which goes up to 25,000 DPI. Not that anyone would ever be able to use that, but the sensor has very accurate tracking and is very quick. Logitech is using the 20M Omron mechanical switches in this mouse. They have updated to this new switch from the 50M Omrons on the original G Pro. The original G Pro was notorious for developing double clicking and this change of switches may be Logitech's solution. Only time will tell if this issue has been resolved. What I can say is that the switches on this mouse feel really nice. They deliver a quick, snappy, and smooth experience. 
Now I'm going to be doing a little sound test for you guys so you can hear what this bell sounds like. The Superlight retains the shape of the original G Pro Wireless, and that's a good thing. This shape is so versatile and fits all different kinds of grips. Whether you have bigger hands or smaller hands, whether you like to palm or claw your mouse, you'll find that the G Pro Superlight is comfortable to hold. The shell is coated with the soft, grippy coating that is so satisfying to hold. I myself have a larger hand size and find the mouse to be very comfortable. I play a lot of FPS, mainly Warzone at the moment. I usually go between a claw and palm grip. For reference, I'm currently using a Razer Gigantis V2 mouse pad. This mouse pad is a happy medium between soft and hard. I'm generally good at tracking targets and I like making quick flicks and adjustments, so a medium mouse pad works well for me and the super light works perfectly with it. I also tried it on the original Gigantis, which is a softer mouse pad, and found it to work well with that as well. The reason the mouse works so well on any mouse pad type is these amazing new 0% additive PTFE feet. The same material cooking pans are coated with. The surface area on these feet is very large. Here is a Viper Ultimate in comparison. The difference is quite stark. You can also use the puck I showed you earlier to add even more PTFE to the bottom of the mouse. The experience these feet provide is very well rounded. Their durability over time is yet to be tested and I could see them as being a bit too thin. So if you're using a soft mouse pad, you may want to get some aftermarket glides to avoid sinkage. Now, I want to talk about the MicroB charging port. Yes, at $150, a lot of people expect this mouse to have a USB-C connection, which is mainly focused on productivity. But this is a gaming mouse that is focused on performance. So this is going to live on my desk. I don't see myself traveling with this alongside a MacBook or an Ultrabook anytime soon. So I can forgive that. And also, the addition of a USB-C connector may have increased the weight or the price. Besides, not a lot of mice use USB-C connectors to begin with. Like this MX Master has it, but it's big and heavy and it's focused on productivity. The Viper Ultimate from Razer, the main competitor to this mouse, still uses a micro USB. So I can see this as being a con, but it's not a con that bothers me too much. Overall, although I think this mouse could have been a lot better, unless they could have added more features, I think they took the route of if it ain't broke, then why fix it? And although I'm well aware of that, I still really like this mouse, and I think they've put out the best gaming mouse on the market right now. If you're looking to snag this mouse right now, you might find that it's always out of stock. But using the notify me email feature on multiple websites can alert you when it's back in stock. All right, guys, this was Mo. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Superlight, and you enjoyed the little reveal I did of my new setup. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. If you're trying to find your way back to my content, then please subscribe with notifications on. And I hope you have an awesome day. See you guys next time.